Hello and welcome to another video of ICT Tech Gaming. This is my review of Mars Horizons. Now this is a game which is basically you lead a major space agency as you guide humanity to Mars. In this, in it's a strategy simulation game where you construct a base, design and build rockets, conduct missions throughout the solar system, and basically write your own history of space exploration. Um, this particular game was created with support from the European Space Agency and the UK Space Agency, which, if anything, is all only going to enhance it to try and give it a bit more of a realistic feel to it, with, while still being fun to play. Now, this particular. Um, title is now available on PC, PlayStation 4, Xbox One and also Nintendo Switch and at the moment they do have a 10% launch discount on Switch, Steam and Xbox. Um, the PlayStation Plus users will also get this discount but if you don't have PlayStation Plus then you'll be paying the standard price which I'll go into at a later stage. So let's go in and decide whether this is the type of game which you guys will want to spend your money on. Okay, so this is the main menu which you are greeted with when you first start the game. If we go into the options, I'll quickly go through all the different things here. So you've got your general tab, your display, graphics, controller, mouse and keyboard, audio and accessibility tabs. Now there's not a mass amount of options on this because the game is relatively easy to follow and get to grips with. But essentially in the general tab you've got your language settings and all of your tooltip settings. These are pop-ups that will come up throughout the game to try and help you or to give you kind of q-tips of what's happening at that moment in time. But if we go across the display, you can choose your native resolution and also whether you want it window full screen or anything like that. And the UI scale. Now it defaults at 80%. To me, that is perfectly sized. I don't really feel the need to turn it up. The one thing I do say is V-Sync goes on as standard. So the first thing I did was turn that off. Now the frames I got was around 250 FPS without any issues. And like I say, it's not a demanding title, so you shouldn't find any problems with that. Graphic settings are ultra standard or were for my machine anyway and everything on here was set to the maximum. The only thing that was turned off is the particle effects optimization because that wasn't required. Um, so yeah, so it's essentially like I say the game is not a heavy hitting game. It runs on most computers so there shouldn't be any issues running this game at all. Now with the game being optimized for obviously PlayStation and Xbox and Nintendo as well, obviously it has controller support. So the hidden on the screen gives you an idea of the button layouts as well. So obviously it's going to have all the controller kind of optimizations you can do. And if you go to your mouse and keyboard, it gives you all your sensitivities and everything like that. I don't really use the, the keyboard that much in the game because the majority of it you can do from the mouse. The only time I really ever use a keyboard is when I'm escaping out of a menu or saving the game or quitting. On the audio side, it's pretty basic, just stuff, you know, just all the different levels, including the play in the background, which basically means when you tab out, you can either have it music still playing and it will turn off when you tab out. But it's all pretty basic stuff here than that you get in most games. Now, the accessibility, this is for people that may struggle, say, with flashing images or anything like that. You can disable the screen effects and particle effects, so if it is something that you may struggle with, then you can turn those effects off. And it is nice that they've put that in because it means it will be much more accessible to a wider audience. So how do you set up a game? So essentially you choose your space agency, whether it's the ESA, which is the European Space Agency, NASA, which is the USA, Russian, um, the Chinese or the Japanese. And then you can even create your own custom one, whether it be name whatever you want, and you can change the flags as well. So you can have kind of customize it a little bit, have that little bit more personal touch to it. And essentially from there, you then get to choose what you want to call the spaceport and also the traits and everything that you want for your specific um for your specific game now the traits are quite a good little feature because it means you can add buff certain areas and also take penalties in certain areas to create more points to then spend on other traits um it's a nice little aspect because it means if you want to play differently each time you can do so it increases a little bit of the playability um the game itself once you've done that it has three difficulties which is Explorer, Pioneer or Veteran, which is basically another way of saying easy, medium and hard. Um, the game, even on its hardest, is not unplayable to the point where you're going to get frustrated with it. All it does is it basically means the other nations will be able to progress quicker and the mission RNG is a little bit tweaked to make it a bit more difficult for you. 
Once you actually get into the game, your basic view is of Earth from space and you have the UI up and what you can do is you can got a menu system on the left in icons which is basically your research, your missions, your spaceport and your diplomacy and also the Spacepedia which is basically an encyclopedia going through all the history and stuff as you unlock stuff it will give you more information on that rocket and things like that so it gives you a bit of a lesson as well if you want to know a bit more information about it and how they came to be including the missions and everything like that as well now in the research tree it gives you three tabs so you can kind of choose missions buildings or vehicles and then you have a choice to make on what you want to research next so normally you'll find there's two different routes you can go down on each and then the idea of that is you can then choose what type of missions you want to take um, which type of rockets you want to research to use and also what buildings you want to try and help you get along the way now the research tree is the same regardless how many times you play the game but the routes you can take it can be different each time because the whole point of this game is to basically be the first to do things and get to the place first so you want to get into space you've got to be first into space you want to get to the moon you want to get first to the moon because you get bonuses for being first second and third so it's 25 10 and 5 percent bonuses once you become fourth or fifth you don't get any bonuses you just get the standard rewards so you kind of get a little bit um you don't want to get bogged down trying to cover all of the missions otherwise you'll start falling behind quite drastically um the other side of things is on the buildings you can then choose to like to research better buildings to get you more science or to do some training so you can train on basically vehicle um, reliability payload reliability and also just to get more science and that's basically that is influenced by when you're actually setting up the mission you choose what date you want and the further away you choose it the more bonus you get for it up to a certain level now in the vehicles that's basically choosing what rocket you want to use to get into space and use on your missions and again this adds an extra bit of playability because it might be ones you won't use and then you can choose them next time and each one has its um, kind of pros and cons whether it be cheaper but less reliable or whether you choose one which is more expensive and has basically a bit more reliability and they take different times to actually research and then the next one is you've got your missions in there you basically have two options you have your milestone missions which is basically the story missions and drive you forwards they're the ones that you get your first second third fourth and fifth and you also have what's classed as request missions. Those request missions will basically be just anybody just saying, oh, I need you to put a satellite in space or a guidance system needs testing. And that will basically give you more money or science to then spend on research or building things. The spaceport is next and that is where you build different buildings to complement what you're trying to do next, whether it be a medium launch pad or a research center or something like that. And the buildings on here, as you move them around, what they're adjacent to will either give you a penalty or it will give you a bonus so putting certain buildings together will help get your goals better and give you like extra little perks so you do have to start thinking about that and later on in the game when you start filling up the um, area you've got to physically build on you then start having to move things around and start having to think a bit more strategically where you want to place things because you're a lot more restricted for space you also have diplomacy and in this screen is where you will then increase your relations with the other nations and so relations with nations there you go and um, you can basically do joint missions or share technologies and things like that so you can uh, improve your relations and then it can start working to your benefit um, you don't necessarily have to do that if you want to go it alone you can go it alone and it might make it a bit more difficult but it might make it a bit more interesting so it adds different challenges so you can kind of play the game how you want to play it you have in the top right your money your science or research points as you may want to call it and your popularity or followers now these things are quite important because obviously the money you use to actually build rockets and build your buildings the science dash research is what you use to actually research new technologies and new rockets including buildings and things like that and different missions now what the popularity and followers do is each turn you get so much more um, money per month because a turn equals one month and the more followers or popularity you have the more funding you will get each turn and what you have is a financial review each year and it will or ever so ever so many turns and then what it will do is if your followers have increased the money you get each turn will increase 
the game itself is turn based and like I said earlier it is one month per turn but it gives you a little thing in the bottom right to tell you what you've got coming up and how many turns away it is you can even skip the next event if you like I choose not to because in the bottom left you'll see a little symbol which gives you notifications so you know if the um, other nations are six months away from launching a rocket and what mission they're doing you can also get that by clicking on the earth and you open up the missions um, board and that will basically show you if they're in the planning stage if they're not even looking at it and if they have if they are in the planning stage how far away are they until they're looking at launching so you can find kind of judge what direction they're going in if it's the same direction to yours how quickly you have to do it to beat them um, when you start a mission what you have to do when starting a mission is you build your rocket and your payload it will then give you a perk or um, penalty or you might get neutral where you basically get little extras after you've built it depending on how lucky you are again this is an RNG element and then what you do is you build your rocket that you want to use to take it up into space now once you do that you then get to plan your mission on the plan you will choose any training you want to do whether you want to increase your payload your vehicle or get more science and then the next bit will be choosing a date now you have three different types of dates you have optimum suboptimum and your just can't fly dates and then depending on what you choose will depend on if you get any penalties when flying if it rains or if the weather's bad then you'll get a penalty but if it's perfect clear skies sometimes you might even get a bit of a bonus on your reliability so you want to choose them wisely once you do that you kind of get onto the launch pad you get a little clip of you going for mission control then onto the launch pad and then this is where the major rng kind of element is you get percentages for critical failure negative impact neutral and then a positive event now neutral is essentially your means everything's gone well and there's been no added bonuses and no negative impact the negative impact one is a successful launch but there was hiccups along the way so you do get a you do essentially get a penalty against the rewards for that particular mission and then if you go for a positive event it means it went better than expected and then you end up getting um, a bit of a bonus now if it's just going up into space then that's fine that will be it over but if you're doing a specific mission whether it be to lunar orbit landing on the moon or putting a satellite into space you will then get like a bit of a mini game where you will then have to do um, something where you've got to claim things like data comms and other other elements and how you do that is you have power um, allocation and you can use that to basically build up on certain elements and then you can even use those elements to get a bonus on other elements and the idea is let's say you need one two comms and two data and you can get a bonus for having three comms and three data so you kind of choose the ones to help you get there and help you get the number you need so let's say you get a comms on one on one of your turns and then you use that comms to then get three data and then vice versa and things like that so you kind of it's a bit of a balancing act and the idea is as long as you get the minimum it's a successful it's a success on that particular part of the mission whether it be orbit or um, landing or whatnot if you fail it then it becomes a failed mission but if you get the bonus again you'll get something like a 50 percent bonus on the rewards so there is an rng element there but if you did fail it you can use an extra power element to basically resist and get a guaranteed success on that one module you're doing you do also get the option to recharge your battery as well which will give you one extra element for power to use how you see fit but you do have to kind of ration and balance it out to make sure you're using it the most efficiently the good thing about the game is you can essentially take any direction you want with it you can do it how you want you can either follow in the footsteps of the soviet union or nasa and try to be the first one that was on the moon or you could choose someone like china japan or even the esa or your own if you so wish and then set history by making it they're the first ones to actually get into space and actually land on the moon the next stage from that what happens is 
as you start unlocking more and more planets, you then can do missions to Mars, you do missions to Venus and all the other planets as well. So the idea is you start unlocking planets and then you can start doing missions to them. As you unlock the planets, you click on them and it will give you a list of missions for that specific planet. Because of that, I think the developers have left themselves open to be able to do DLCs and possibly extra things for the game, which is always a good thing and a positive because it adds extra life to it. And you never know, they might add a bit of modding support, which might then even include different changes to it, which would be quite interesting to see what people come up with as well. As far as optimization, I haven't had any bugs that I've come across or anything. It runs absolutely perfectly. Like I say, it's not the most demanding game, but it does have a lot of polish to it. So I have to give credit to the developers because although it's not a demanding game, it ran absolutely perfectly and I've not had any issues which unfortunately is quite rare nowadays as a lot of games now come out with a lot of bugs so it's always a positive to see somebody that's actually taking a bit of care and attention with their game and releasing something with no bugs. As for the price at the moment they've got a 10% discount for the launch so you can actually pick this game up now for £13.49 or $17.99. The full price for it is £14.99 in pounds and $19.99 that's US dollars just to clarify. Um, for PlayStation, this is where it's a little bit different. You can only get the discount if you're on PlayStation Plus. So if you've not got PlayStation Plus, you will have to pay the full price. Whereas Steam, Xbox and Nintendo will have that discount automatically. So in conclusion, if you like space games or casual kind of strategy games, then I do think you really enjoy this game. It's not got a steep learning curve, so it's nice and easy to play. You can just pick it up and then lose a few hours to it. And it's a beautiful looking game and I do enjoy the kind of direction that it's taken if you're somebody that normally plays like the grand strategies let's say something like a paradox game say um, king crusaders or something like this then this is not going to have as much in depth as that but if you fancy something as a bit of a change a bit more light-hearted or a bit more easy going and something you can just pick up and play then i still think this is definitely something worth giving a go providing you like the topic that it's based on now if you're somebody that prefers your kind of like racing or twitch shooters or something a lot more fast paced then this might be one to give a miss because it might not fill, fulfill what you're looking for but as far as the game itself it is a polished game the price is really good for it as well and you, there is fun to be had here so i can recommend it if it's that type of game that you like to play this has been my review of mars horizons i hope this review has helped you decide whether this is the game for you if it has please feel free to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel and if you want to get notified of any future content i've got coming up whether it be reviews or playthroughs then put that bell on and it will notify you i am planning on doing a bit of a playthrough on this so if that's something that will interest you then keep an eye out for them i've been ct tech gaming i hope you've enjoyed the video and i'll catch you next time